Nick Foles is going to be, you better hope he's mobile because he's going to be running for his life. Now, let's not get too far of ourselves, my caffeinated friends. <laughs> we are, I believe, unstoppable this year. Haley's Comet has to be flying in the sky for that to happen, folks. And I'm sorry you guys are so salty about the trick play. It just happened. It's in the past. And welcome once again to Fan Face Off. I'm Chris Cashman. Every week, we will be tackling the most heated rivalries on and off the field. And we're giving you the power to go head to head against other fans. Chance for you to defend the home team. Now, last week, we talked to fans from New England, San Francisco, Green Bay, and, well, things got a little heated. Seattle doesn't like us, and we don't like Seattle. The Niner fans are turning into Oakland Raider fans. The Seahawks fans talk about Russell Wilson being a top five quarterback. His stats are no better than Kaepernick. Now this week, we're going to be talking to fans from St. Louis. Preview that week one matchup as they get ready to host Seattle tomorrow. Now, if you have a question for our panel of fans or anything else to say, tweet us. Hashtag fan face off. We'll try to address your comments there. You may even be asked to join our Skype wall in the coming weeks, so join the conversation. All right, for the next 30 minutes, our super fans will be representing Seattle. There is Norb, there's Dave, there's Garrett, and Landon. Now on the flip side, defending St. Louis, we've got Danny, there's Alex, Danielle, and Palmer. All right, gang, we're going to get right to it. We'll start with you, Danny. Preseason in the books. It's a wrap. St. Louis went 0 and 4, winless. Seattle went 2 and 2. They split them. Is this any kind of indication of what we can expect from these teams? I don't think so. I mean, it's when you look at St. Louis, um, I can tell you right away that they kept it very vanilla in the preseason, and I know that there's a lot left in them, and I don't think that those first four preseason games are any indication of what the Rams will do this season, especially because our first unit barely played. So, you know, I think that, you know, it was a time to grow, a rough draft, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that you can um, take too much from those preseason games as far as what the Rams are capable of this season. Norb over in Seattle, what are people saying? They split two and two. Excited? Good news, bad news? Does it mean anything? Uh, generally, when it comes to the preseason, we don't take too much stock in it other than getting a sneak preview at the depth and the other players who are coming up behind the starters. Uh, but for me, I was really encouraged because we started out a little bit rocky with the offensive line, but then in the, uh, the following two games where we kind of went our two-win uh, win streak, the offensive line started to gel, and I thought we saw some positive flow going into the regular season. So I'm feeling pretty good about the direction and the momentum that we're taking as we start the regular season. Anybody else want to pile on on what they saw in the preseason? I think you're absolutely right. This is Garrett here. I mean, listen, the, the, the starters are never going to play. Maybe in the third game, they'll play into the third quarter. But really, the only thing that you're going to take out of this is different units. Uh, and our offensive line certainly was shaky to start off with, but it's going to certainly take some time. The defense, folks, if you've not seen our front seven, you better take another look. Preseason will tell you that they were that good. So, um, and the same thing with our secondary, same thing with our running backs, even though Marshawn Lynch didn't play. Uh, you can still break it down by the units, but beware of that front seven. The preseason definitely showed you that, folks. Now, Danielle, you raised her hand. Hold on. Danielle raised her hand so she gets polite points. Go ahead. I did. I was going to say much the same as what Garrett just said. Our defense is going to get major points heading into the season. But for us, it's also a victory heading into the season with a healthy quarterback and um, a good number of our players who are healthy. We're going to miss Todd Gurley starting out. But other than that, we're really excited about getting started. All right, let's move forward. Let's look ahead here. We'll go to you, Palmer. Uh, this division, as you know, has been one of the best in football the last couple of years. But is this the year that St. Louis finally wins the division? Well, I don't really know if this really going to be that year for St. Louis. There's still a lot of issues uh, with this team, especially starting up in front uh, on that offensive line. They got a very young, very inexperienced front line. And you got to think about this. When you make a deal to get a guy like Nick Foles, a guy that's going to be the focal point of this team, the leader of this team, you got to have the best five guys in front of them. And that's a major concern. Now, with the defensive side, of course, they got a lot of great parts on that defense but listen they got to stop reading on press clippers too okay because they have yet to crack the top 10 when it comes to defense so uh, when it comes to this team and, and looking at them overall it's really going to depend on how good that Nick Foles be able to get that ball out of his hands because right now the way the offensive line is they're going to have to throw that football consistently now Garrett you were giving me those put me in coach eyes what do you think 
<laughs> well, you know what? He's he's absolutely right. But the f- problem is, is that they're counting on Ron Jaworski's offspring to lead their team, and that is Nick Foles. He hasn't played enough. He hasn't played enough seasons for you to lay your hat on that. Todd Gurley, not going to be playing for the first three or four games. Hey, guess what? You may not even have Trey Mason for week one against us, which leaves Benny Cunningham. And I promise you, by the time the Seahawks defense gets done with them, you're going to mistake him for Richie Cunningham. It's finally time to stir up some things right now. And I do think the uh, St. Louis Rams will finally win the NFC West. But I think this year, Jeff Fisher finally puts it all together. No injuries. Nothing will happen. This will be our year that we finally take the NFC West. Look, the only thing you guys are putting together is moving boxes and tape, all right? Because you're going to Los Angeles. That's the only thing you're putting together. All those nice little belongings, the helmets, the shoulder pads, the knee pads, the girdles in a box because you're moving. That's the only thing. is St. Louis is not winning the division in 2015, and they're not winning in 2016. And quite frankly, I'm starting to wonder when you're all going to ask Jeff Fisher, when is it going to be time to win the division? Not this year and not next year. Thank you. <laughs> well, we would ask Dave well, Crocky, but he won't give us an answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, we're going to leave that one right there. We're going to move on here. Uh, Danielle, let's go back to you. And this is truth serum in your veins right now. If you truth had your choice, ready. you're starting over, starting a new team. Do you choose the St. Louis defense or Seattle's defense? Oh, gosh, I'd absolutely choose St. Louis's defense. You know why? There are two things about us that are extraordinary this year. Number one, we're bringing back all 11 starters. Our average age is 25, and we have one additional year of experience under our belt. We are, I believe, unstoppable this year. So I think that Seattle is coming up against a very strong wall. You said it right there. Uh, they are the youngest team for the fourth season in a row. St. Louis is the youngest roster out there. Landon, is that a good thing or is that bad news for them? No, they have a young roster because they keep having to turn over their players. They keep having to draft new guys because the guys that are already on the team, they stink. All right, this is what happens when you get a bunch of draft picks. They end up squandering them. Uh, I think the average age is like 24. As far as the comment about them being unstoppable on defense, look, they have a good defensive line. But as far as the secondary is concerned, there's a lot of holes. As long as Janoris Jenkins is on the field, I'm not very worried. Uh, I think they're far from an elite defense. They're good. They have some scary guys up front, but that's about it. Now, let's not get too far of ourselves, my caffeinated friends. <laughs> now, when you talk about this round front four, you cannot leave out Aaron Donald. I mean, there were, there were times where Russell Wilson, Harold would stand up on his head like Sonic the Hedgehog. You got to be kidding me. I mean, he he's definitely somebody that's very difficult to block. Now, when it comes to that secondary, yeah, it's a known factor that Janoris Jenkins has his moments. Yeah, he's shacked in the food from time to time. But they got Tremaine Johnson. He's a cornerstone guy of that secondary solid guy you got LaMarcus Joyner who's turned around he's a very exciting player um, and then you got TJ McDonald and uh McLeod on the back end of that secondary the one of the biggest problems with it with that secondary is, is that they gotta stop taking those chances when they play with the side themselves of course they unstoppable it's a proven fact the defense your defensive line is legit there's no doubt about that from Robert Quinn to Donald front seven legit but that's it. You're coming up against a Seahawk offense that's revamped. You got Jimmy Graham. That's it. Your Remember, linebacking core is going to be taken. It's, it's going to be taken away right there. You're not going to know what right, to do with Jimmy Graham. You've got, you, you got the rookie. You got the rookie, Tyler Lockett. He's going to blow past your whole secondary. He's going to blow past your whole secondary. All you had to do is see a little taste in the preseason. All right, we're going to leave that one right there, though. But folks, stay tuned. You see what's happening here later on. Our panelists will be weighing in on their picks for the biggest fantasy impact player of the week. But up next, we'll be going outside the huddle, answering your questions from social media. You've been sending us your questions to the uh, Twitter or Skype accounts below. It's right there on your screen. We'll answer them next week. We'll see you all right here, right after the timeout. So the attendance don't mean nothing when it comes to... Of course it does, because that's your home opener, homie. And welcome back to Fan Face Off, where fans get to verbally box in defense of their teams. We're putting down our dukes and speaking up here today. We get to laugh. We might even learn something along the way. We want to welcome in one of our new panelists from St. Louis. Please welcome Carl. Carl, I almost got that hat on Groupon. You beat me to it. Here we go. We're going to go outside the huddle where our panelists will address the questions that you've been sending in on social media this week. Here we go. Carl, we've got a Twitter comment for you. 
This is about your quarterback shuffle. Nick Foles is going to take St. Louis to places Sam Bradford never could. How do you respond to that tweet? I agree, easily. Uh, Sam Bradford has no arm. He can't stay healthy, he can't stay on the field. Nick Foles can lead a receiver. Uh, it's, it's, it's night and day. You know, St. Louis finally has a quarterback, so now we can beat Seattle. Garrett, you're shaking your head down there. Landon's shaking his head. Garrett, what do you think? Are you going to stay up at night worried about Nick Foles? I mean, I mean come on. The guy started throwing up 10 interceptions last year, and if he was what you said he was, he'd be starting for the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, let's be realistic here, folks. Nick Foles is going to do absolutely nothing for you. He's got cement shoes. He can't move around the pocket. Sure, he could throw a couple of balls. Any NFL quarterback can, but if once again you are counting on him to help you win that division, you better keep looking elsewhere. You, you're, you're way off base. Uh, you, 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 he's mobile tell quarterback. Me I'm waiting, tell me how I'm off base. Hey, I am. He's a mobile quarterback. Not as mobile as Russell Wilson, but he can move in the pocket. Is that it? The only place, the only place <laughs> that Nick Foles is going to take the Rams is maybe third place because the 49ers are going to suck so bad this year. But, look, the problem is Sam Bradford, he, the reason he never succeeded uh, with the Rams is because he never had anybody around him. And, look, we're five years later. What does Nick Foles have around him? One of the worst receiving cores in the NFL. He's got nobody to throw to. He's got no running game, at least as far as playing against Seattle. And, and the offensive line is made up of a bunch of rookies who uh, haven't proven themselves yet. So Nick Foles is going to be – you better hope he's mobile because he's going to be running for his life. Danielle yeah, in St. Louis, I saw that rolling of the eyes. You don't agree with that statement, I take I was, it. I was laughing at the comments about the offensive line, considering Seattle's offensive line is a mismatch of where did Max Unger go and, oh, wait, our center has never been on the offensive line before. I, I'm just – you know, it's. I'm waiting. I'm excited about seeing Nick Foles prove himself. Sam Bradford clearly couldn't. He played 49 of 80 games in the time that he was with us. We have exceptional hope for Nick Foles. <laughs> I want to send it back to you, Danielle, because we got another question from the fans online here. Uh, this one rather pointed. Without Adderall, does Seattle have the attention span to catch the trick play St. Louis will throw at him? You know what? To me, it's part of the game to do something out of the box, do something interesting to make your players stand on their toes and pay attention to the game. It's really not our problem that your players went in the wrong direction. So I think that if we continue to make the plays and you continue to fall for them, that's your problem, hey, not ours. So All right, so, so last year, yeah, it worked for you guys, okay? I mean, you guys won the game only because of those trick plays. And the thing about it, it's a one-trick pony, though. I mean, you can't, what, you can keep pulling out more trick plays to try to win the game. The bottom line is you got to win a game consistently. You've got to have a balanced team, balanced offense, balanced defense is what Seattle has. You don't make a living on trick plays. It's like you can't be Daffy Duck blowing yourself up with nitroglycerin and saying, oh, that, that's the only trick I got. Sorry. Norb's uh, bringing some happens. cartoons into the mix. Uh, Palmer, hang on. We're going to send it down to Palmer here. At Football TNT tweeted us, says, Ciara is going to have to tuck two babies in after Seattle gets crushed on Sunday. Hashtag baby Wilson. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's the norm to see Russell Wilson running from his life. Ask him, which team does he hate playing the most? It's the St. Louis Rams. And it's a proven fact. They sack him. They harass him. They hurry him. He was one of the main reasons why they lost that game last year. And listen, it's, we all know who the Rams are. If they was a better team and if they was a little bit more disciplined, they would have won that game last year in Seattle. Remember, they were shutting them out for three and a half quarters. Do, do we remember that? And I'm sorry you guys are so salty about the trick play. It just happened. It's in the past. There's, listen, there's nobody, there's nobody, there's nobody salty. There's nobody, 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 there's nobody,
joined by Brendan. All right, we're going to jump right in. Here we go. Danny, what are your biggest concerns about tomorrow's game? What's going to have you up tonight? What are you going to be thinking about? What are you going to be thinking about in the morning when you wake up? I just am going to be thinking about, obviously, Seattle is very talented. That's not a secret to anybody. You know, Russell Wilson's big. I mean, Graham is someone to be a threat. Um, they, we didn't see a whole lot of him in the preseason, but you know he's going to be extremely active. You're going to see a lot from him. I mean, the Seattle Seahawks have been known to really utilize their tight ends, especially against the Rams. So I think that you have to worry about him. And then Marshawn Lynch. I mean, he he's explosive. I talked to Coach Fisher today about him. You know, he said there's really no way to stop him. Um, but, you know, we're going to do our best. We start four first round draft picks and we have a fifth as a reserve. So I'm pretty confident in those guys. Over in Seattle, Horace, newcomer to the Skype showdown. What do you think? What are you nervous about in regards to tomorrow? Or are you nervous at all? Uh, I'm not really nervous. Uh, if I had to be nervous about anything, it'd probably be about the Rams' defensive line. You know, uh, like she was just saying, they do have five first-rounders, and they're starting four, but they've been had four first-rounders, you know, last year, and it, it didn't change anything. They still only won six games. That's just like that. Brennan, newcomer, welcome. Join the fun. What do you think? What are you thinking well, about in regards to tomorrow? Here's the deal. You have to wonder if they're ready to go yet. The fact that Roger Saffold's right now shifting from left guard to right guard, and he may be more comfortable on the right side. But for a Rams team that wants to run, we're a little concerned if the offensive line is up to the challenge to be able to move that front and open holes for what it looks like Benny Cunningham on Sunday. Look, I'm going to be honest with you guys. My list is really short when it comes to my worries. Uh, and I'll start with that defensive line. Yeah. Listen, when we play the Rams, it's always going to be a knuckle fest. Uh, you know, they beat us up. We beat them up. And I'm also worried about the special teams, not the fact that Jeff Fisher runs trick plays, but the fact that he runs them whenever he damn well pleases. So that part is concerning. But listen, folks, they're barely going to have – Barely going to get 40,000 people in that stadium. Man, come on, man. <laughs> what the hell does a tennis have to do with what happens on that football field? You know it, and I know it. You it's just said yourself, it's going to be a knuckle fest. And it's always been a knuckle fest it from happens. the very yes. It's, it's yes. from the so the attendance don't mean nothing when it comes to... Oh, of course to it does, because that's your home opener, homie. That no, is your home not. opener. No, it does Better not, have man. that crowd so, behind so you get so you fired up with the problem is, is everybody knows so you they're going to be the same. I guess we'll have to agree to disagree there. Uh, Brendan, this has got to be a familiar soundtrack to you doing the sports radio thing. Uh, let's go to our fantasy blitz. Uh, you get to pick your top fantasy impact player for Sunday. Uh, who are you picking and why? Well, I'll contradict myself a little bit. I'm going to go with Benny Cunningham for the Rams, and, and here's why. Jeff Fisher wants to run. So whether it's Gurley, whether it's Mason, whether it's Benny Cunningham, we know it's not going to be Gurley. I, I think Cunningham is going to get the call. And, and here's what Seahawks fans need to remember. Uh, Jeff Fisher and this staff love Benny Cunningham. He survived a lot of the running back turnover the last few years, and they've kept him on. One of the big reasons is he can catch the ball out of the backfield. So if you're a fantasy player, there's a good chance he's on your waiver, uh, waiver wire right now. I'd pick him up, especially if you're, if you're in a PPR league. I think he could have three to five catches, maybe 100 total yards combined, and I wouldn't rule him out uh, scoring a touchdown. That'd be a pretty good get for somebody that really wasn't even thought about at your draft. Norb in Seattle, I know uh, one of the face of the fans. What do you think, man? What are you looking at fantasy-wise? Who's going to make a big dent tomorrow? Well, I think uh, it's going to be the big weapon that we acquired in the offseason. Uh, we really haven't seen it yet, even in the preseason. But Jimmy Graham, you know, they, they really didn't showcase him too much in the preseason but i'm telling you this is the perfect game for him to, sh to do what he does best especially when you got a, a line like the rams do, do when they bring in pressure like that nothing beats pressure better than having a tight end that outlet pass that the short passing game that can uh, defeat that that uh, aggressive line that they've got so i think graham's going to be deadly on on third down situations and uh, especially in the red zone i think he's going to come up huge huge for seattle tomorrow and let's right. not forget, Russell Wilson last year, guys, he might have had the best game of his career against the Rams in St. Louis, and the Seahawks still couldn't win 300 passing yards, 100 rushing yards. Wilson's actually progressively gotten better each and every year he's played the Rams in St. Louis. So if I'm a Rams fan, obviously you're looking out for the former Wisconsin Badger. Great stuff. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to all of our panelists here tonight. Good luck tomorrow. Right, we're going to call out tonight's MVPs representing St. Louis. 
Palmer, you're in pole position. And for Seattle, we've got Garrett. Now, after the break, our MVPs are going to face off one last time, going head to head right here on the end zone. And we're back with more fan face-off. Time to enter the end zone. Brought to you by Jack in the Box. We've got our two MVPs standing by from Seattle. It's Garrett and in St. Louis, Palmer. They're ready to throw down verbally. Going to give a pair of our heated rivals here at tonight's show one last chance. Their chance to go head to head, give their final predictions on tomorrow's game just a few hours away. We're going to start with you in Seattle. Uh, Vegas has your team beating St. Louis by four points. We're putting 20 seconds on the clock. Your last chance to give us that prediction on the score tomorrow. Anything else you want to say about the game? Garrett, 20 seconds and go. Score is going to be 24-13 Seattle. I'll give you that 13 points and maybe a touchdown in there because it is game one. Fact of the matter is, is we got a better offense. We got a better quarterback. We got a better defense all the way around, just not our front seven. And we got better special teams and chalk it up to the coach. And the fact of the matter is, is bring some of those St. Louis ribs out here, Palmer, and take a look at the 12th man. You tell them attendance Time. doesn't matter. Time. I'm not wearing a watch, but I trust the position of the moon and the stars in the sky. 20 seconds. Good stuff. All right, you're up next, St. Louis. Palmer, uh, Microsoft's Bing predicts St. Louis with a 56% chance of winning. You know the routine. This is it. 20 seconds on the clock. Go. Rams going to win 17 to 14. They're going to get five field goals. And they're going to get a safety. The best part of waking up is plenty of sacks on Russell Wilson. Rams going to win going away. <laughs> Just chance, like that. Palmer. Not a chance, Palmer. <laughs> Palmer, he left some time on the clock. I know, Palmer, come on. That's what they're going to do Get in their own stuff. All right, good stuff, Garrett Palmer. We shall see only a few hours away. They're going to do it on the field the old-fashioned way. Big thanks, you guys. Thank you for joining us. All of you at home here, thanks for joining us for Fan Face Off. Next week, we're going to be bringing in fans from Seattle and Green Bay to discuss that week two matchup. This one's going national. Everybody's going to be watching. Will we have another Phil Mary? Or will Green Bay finally get revenge for last year's conference championship game? We'll be talking about that anticipated matchup and be looking back on the rest of the opening week action. Now, if you'd like to appear on an upcoming episode, you can tweet us at Fan Face Off Show or use our hashtag Fan Face Off. Send your comments. Just use that hashtag Fan Face Off and we can track that conversation. Tell us what you have to say. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. That's it. Promotional consideration provided by Skype from Microsoft. Skype instant messaging, voice, and video calling make it simple to share your life with the people who matter most, wherever they are.